all right thank you once again for joining us this evening at matoka tv studio all right the video you're about to watch right now apostle Arima will say unveil the shocking secret that will bless your life so much two method for dismounting prosperities and powers and i show you this clip is going to bless your life so much all right over to you sir amen, amen. but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Can we repeat verse 8? is critical. One to go. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men this scripture will be fulfilled here today second scripture first peter chapter 1 from verse 9 to 12 first peter chapter 1 from verse 9 to verse 12 receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported to you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the holy ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into if your bible is not borrowed underline the holy ghost sent down from heaven bless these words into our hearts tonight and let these words be a source of fire in the name of jesus Oh, your amen is dead. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, in order for Jesus to accomplish that which he was dispatched from heaven to do, God, by an act of his authority, decided to include you in Jesus. So that anything that happened to Jesus was happening to you. If you take a pen and put it in a diary and take the diary to Kano, where would the pen be? It will be in Kano because you put it inside of the diary and you took the diary to Kano. So what God did was that he included you in Christ by an act of his authority. So that when Christ was on the cross, you were on the cross. When Christ died, you died. When Christ was buried, you were buried. When Christ rose from the dead, you also rose with him. When Christ ascended and was domiciled in the heavenlies, you also were quickened with Christ. And you ascended with him. And right now your reality is seated with Christ in the heavenly realms far above principalities and powers. Now the truth of the matter is you must understand your reality if you are going to walk in the fullness of God. If you meet a witch and the reality of that witch may be, may be in the water. You might take a cane and cane the witch in the natural. 
as long as you are not touching the reality of the witch, you have done nothing about that witch. You can only put an end to the troubles and the menace that the witch is creating if you have authority to address the context in which her reality is. And so, since we were included in Christ Jesus, we need to understand those four stages, the implication of those four stages that Christ went through on your life. Because he was on the cross, you were on the cross. He died, you died. He was buried, you were buried. He resurrected, you resurrected with him. He ascended into heaven and that's where you are now. Hallelujah. Now, the two scriptures that I read has to do with our reality within the context of our ascension. The possibilities that are bound toward you because right now you are seated in the heavenly places. And when I finish the theoretical aspect, we'll move to the practical aspect. And then we'll exercise the things that I'm teaching. And then you will see results on this field this night. If you are still with me, say Amen. First scripture, Jesus died according to the scriptures. All right. Let me lead you to First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 3 and 4 so that we see a documentation of the process that Jesus went through. Knowing that you were included in him as he went through the process. And at every stage, I will show you the implication of being included in Jesus at this stage, at that stage, at the next stage, until we arrive at ascension. Are you with me? All right. First Corinthians chapter 15. From verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So it is documented that Christ died. Number two. And he was buried. So it's documented that he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So he resurrected according to the scriptures. And the scriptures that we read in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. It reveals how that Jesus ascended after he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. So the scriptures actually confirm that Jesus died. The scriptures confirm that Jesus was buried. The scriptures confirm that Jesus resurrected. The scriptures also confirm that Jesus ascended. Are you still with me? I need to show you the implication of the death of Jesus on your life because Jesus you were included in Jesus before he died 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 join me in the next 20 minutes are you there 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 the Bible says, this is the implication of the death of Christ. 5.15. Amen? The Bible says, and that he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. The principle that God was using in order to secure our redemption was the principle of substitution. And the principle of substitution required that Jesus would take our place in condemnation. Because according 
to the justice system of heaven, the sin of Adam has been inherited by every man. And from heaven's perspective, humankind is good enough for death and for damnation. When Jesus came, he came to satisfy the claims of divine justice. And that required that he would take our place in condemnation. Because the perspective of the justice system of heaven concerning the act that Adam did, which was an act of rebellion in declaring independence against God in the Garden of Eden, was that man will die. And Jesus came to take our place in condemnation, in death. And the other side of the coin required that if indeed he died for all, those of us that have received life through him are no longer expected to live the way we want. But we need to live for the one that died for us and rose again. The cycle of substitution will be complete when those that are recipients of the grace and the mercy of God that is available to, toward us on the basis of the sacrifice of Jesus realize that we have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to consecrate ourselves to live for God just like he stooped low and took our place in condemnation the only reasonable thing that we can do seeing that god exploited the principle and the possibility of substitution in order to provide salvation for us it is therefore only reasonable for us to take our place in living for him so the bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, for instance. It says, Be, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Now, are you here? For those of us that are married, you know, in order for the marriage contract to be valid, when you go for introduction, they will give you a list. The list contains the items that you need to provide. I'm talking about from the African context. Not, not from the American context, where two people can walk into a courtroom and come out snapping selfie, claiming they have married. Hallelujah. From the African context, when you go for introduction, you'll be given a list. And then you go back. If you, if you see 62 bars of yam, that day, even if you don't know that yam grows in the ground, you think it, it grows on trees. Because there is a list. You are in for an adventure. <laughs> you will discover many things that you did not plan to discover. But you are compelled by a list. In fact, in my own case, the list I was given was in Yoruba language. The first need I had was for an ancient interpreter to bring perspective as to what the content, it had to be decoded. That was the first need I had to decode the content of the list. And number 13 on the list, was Eja Osa. Eja Osa. It's a strange species of fish. You are not here. You cannot replace it with tilapia. Because this fish was specified. Eja Osa. It was my mother who lived in Iloring many years ago that told me how to get that fish. May the Lord give you understanding. When we brought the items and we put it on the field, it was a mountain. Because we went all the way to Ibaji to look for yam. There were gorgeous yams. 
Oh my God. And when we laid them up on the field, ah, everybody was wondering, who is the lady that they came to marry like this? May the Lord give you honor in the day you go knocking the door of another family. At the end of the day, we exceeded the list. And they gave us the bride with joy. When you have gotten the bride and after your wedding and you come home, you will find out that there was something you did not provide on the list. And that thing is called love. <laughs> you, may, the, may God help you. You can fulfill the list, but you are not guaranteed love. And Apostle Paul was saying that Jesus paid our bride price. And because the list that was given to him, in order for him to satisfy the claims of divine justice over humankind, was so bogus that it cost him his life. Paul is now saying if you are reasonable, you will love Jesus for free. If you are reasonable, you will not provide another price tag for your love. And so your reasonable act of service in response to the payment of your bride price will be that you consecrate yourself to serve his will. It means every believer that is not consecrated to serve the will of God is unreasonable. He doesn't understand that he's supposed to reciprocate the gesture that substitution made available. And so, God is saying, anyone here that is born again is indebted to Jesus. And it is illegal for you to live a life that is not consistent with his will. You have violated the protocol of substitution, which is the proceeding by which our salvation was secured. If you are still with me, say, Amen. amen. Please help me preach to your neighbor quickly. Tell your neighbor it's time to be reasonable. Should I say something? There is a difference between a sinner and a forgiving sinner. Is that true? There is also a difference between a normal Christian and a consecrated Christian. Because a consecrated Christian has no other vision in life other than to serve the will of God. It takes a heart that understands that we are indebted to Jesus for you to consecrate yourself to serve His will. Some people are not serving Jesus because of their beauty. Meanwhile, your beauty, your money, your finances, your intelligence, your height are all advantages that God has given you that will realize His full potential when you have decided to be reasonable and you, you consecrate yourself to serve the will of God. The challenge that we have in our generation is that so many people have been given privileges by God. But because the average Christian does not understand that your being reasonable begins from your decision. To be consecrated to God, people have gone on various platforms like political platforms, business platforms, and they did not go there in the heart with the heart of consecration. They went there to run their own agenda, and they were a violation to the expectation of heaven because they don't understand the implication of the death of Christ. Number two, burial. It's as if in scripture the issue of burial and resurrection and its attendant consequences in all the verses that you find them in the bible they are dealt with together burial resurrection always dealt with together let us check a few scriptures quickly are you still with me i need to tell you that because god by an act of his authority included you in christ so when jesus died you died when he was buried, what happened? When he resurrected, what happened? When he ascended, what happened? Where are you now? 
Okay, you are following my teaching. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Burial and resurrection is always treated together. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Are you there in Romans 6? Something will happen here today. <laughs> hey, you see the Holy Ghost is here. He's here. The angels are. Okay, don't worry. Let me not bother you. Are you there in Romans 6? Romans chapter 6, verse 4. It said, Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism, by baptism into death. Number two, like as, as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Are you there? Do you still remember Jesus' discussion with Nicodemus? Nicod Jesus came to, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, he said, Master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, because no one can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus asked Jesus and said, How can a man be born again? Can he enter again into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, in explaining the born again reality he went further in verse 5 and he said except a man be born of water and of spirit what he cannot enter into the kingdom all right thank you um, once again for your time and uh, i hope you're really blessed so much with this clip all right the part two of this clip will be displaying on matoka tv tomorrow and don't miss it once again, don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe. All right, thank you and God bless.